This is the second video I made about my analysis of the Fall 2020 anime. In the first part, I introduced Golden Kamoi Season 3, Higurashi When They Cry 2020, The Day I Became a God, and The Irregular at Magic High School Season 2. So I will not mention these four anime in this video, and I will try and briefly introduce what anime are worth looking forward to in the Fall of 2020. The first is introduction of the sequel series, Danmachi Season 3, Haikyuu Season 4. These two anime don't need much introducing, mostly everyone who watched them knows what they're about, and the new The Half Demon Princess. This time, the new Half Demon Princess tells the story of Sasomaru and Inu Yasha's daughters who have traveled to modern times to become Kagome's adopted daughters as they continue to fight with demons. The anime basically retains the previous artwork and style, but the author of the previous work, Rumiko Takahashi, only acts as a character design in a new anime. So, The Half Demon Princess is actually an original anime. In addition, this new anime was announced in May of 2020 and would be broadcasted in October of 2020. Compared to the production standards of other anime of 1 to 2 years, The Half Demon Princess only has 5 months to work with. I can only hope that it won't become an anime like Boruto that tricks viewers' money through nostalgia. I'm standing on a million lives. So what, I'm still standing on billions of lives. The cover of the anime gives me a feeling of when I watch Neon Genesis. The beginning plot is pretty basic, just a male protagonist who's not interested in anything and one day suddenly went to another world of his two female classmates. Over there, there's a half-headed guy like Rei that tells them that they must complete all the tasks before they can go home. In this world, the protagonists have special abilities. As long as they don't all die together, they can resurrect indefinitely. The process of each character growing up again and again through the process of death and uncovering the truth is considered to be quite excellent in the isekai anime that I've seen. Of course, I'm talking about the manga. Based on the performance of the current anime's trailer, how should I say this? It has a sense of age and nostalgia, like watching an anime from 10 years ago. So, for those viewers who have not yet seen this manga, but still want to watch the anime, I suggest that you should not set your expectations too high. Your expectations may be inversely proportional to the quality of the anime. On the other hand, if you're a reader who wants to watch the anime even after reading the manga, then you should hope that the anime gets postponed and its quality gets increased. Fly Me to the Moon This season's rare love anime talks about the protagonist's love at first sight for the heroine. On the street staring at the heroine, to the point that he's in a daze and almost gets sent to another world by a truck. However, the heroine used her body to protect the protagonist and was almost unharmed. Then the protagonist confessed to her, the two directly skipped dating, and began to live together and got married. The style and character design of this anime, especially the trope of being hit by a truck and only bleeding, was extremely familiar to me. Then I discovered that the author of the manga and the author of Hayate the Combat Butler are the same person, and the heroine looks a lot like Hiyagiku Katsuda. So this can also be regarded as Hayate and Hiyagiku's if line. Although the marriage process is quite ridiculous, the manga describes their married life very meticulously and beautifully. And according to uncertain information, the manga was the author's autobiography for his own married life. By the way, the author's wife is Asano Masumi. She's also the cast voice of Risa Asakaze in Hayate the Combat Butler. Do you know what this means? This means that the author wrote the manga, the manga was adapted into an anime, and he then married a cast voice actor from that very anime. And based on their life, he created another manga the year they were married. Then, two years later, this manga is also going to be adapted into an anime. In an interview, he explains that his life right now is quite satisfying. And he also gave a reason as to why in the anime, Fly Me to the Moon, the character suddenly got married. That's because he thinks that dating is too complicated and it's better to just skip to the marriage. Hola dole. Talentless Nana. This story is about the government summoning everyone with superpowers to a small island to train against unknown enemies. But in fact, this is all part of a scheme. Due to the abilities of those people with superpowers being too uncontrollable, the humans gather them onto one island to assassinate them. The heroine Nana was that very assassin, and thus the psychological warfare between superpowers begins. The anime's trailer gives me a feeling of Assassination Classroom plus My Hero Academia, and I personally really like the story about assassins. But I can also imagine the psychological warfare in the comments section after the anime's broadcast may be much more exciting than the one in the anime, and there's probably going to be more viewers flaming the characters rather than discussing the plot. Because although this type of anime is classified as psychological, the design of many plots is not very intelligent. The psychological tag and the label may mean that most of the characters in this anime have psychological disorders. No matter how suspicious the heroine's behavior is, they can't seem to discover her true identity. Therefore, if you want to watch it, please be psychologically prepared. By the grace of the gods, this anime is about a muscular man working overtime every day. In the end, after sneezing four times while sleeping and hitting the back of his head on the bed, he died. Eh? What is this strange way to die? 
Could it be said that now that all the truck drivers have gone to open up marriage agencies and the transportation to isekais are gone, they can only go there this way? After his death, he met three gods. They then turned him into a cute little boy and reincarnated him into another world. To be honest, when I was watching this trailer, I exited several times to see if the author is the author of In Another World of My Smartphone. However, the positioning of this is still a bit different from the smartphone anime, and it's more inclined to be an anime about cultivating slimes and a leisurely life in another world. Other than the manga's plot, the anime production company that's making the anime worries me even more. That's because this company is a new company that's also responsible for two isekai anime in this season. The other one is I'm Standing on a Million Lives. So I suggest you don't put too much hope into the anime's quality. The final work will probably end up as the same result as I'm Standing on a Million Lives. Sorcery Fight, adapted from a jump manga, and the anime is produced by MAPPA. It seems that MAPPA is really working hard to show that they have the ability to make Attack on Titan's final season. I don't know where to start introducing the plot of this manga, because like the anime trailer, it's basically fighting, fighting, and even more fighting. And those character designs give me a very familiar feeling, a low presence heroine, a very cool and silent protagonist, and another protagonist that has something sealed in his body, as well as a teacher that is always wearing an eye mask. Not to mention, they are all forced to participate in the test. Although the beginning plot is pretty cliche, towards the later parts, it gradually becomes more and more unique. Those action scenes are amazing and are must watches. The look and feel of the manga is very good, and the trailer basically reflects the action scenes of the manga, so there's no need to worry about that. In terms of the story, you can understand it as a modern version of Demon Slayer. So whether you're watching for the story or as an action show, this anime can meet your needs. Sleepy Princess in the Demon Castle Humans and demons have started their war. In order to completely destroy the demons, the humans sent their strongest weapon, the princess. Letting the princess pretend to be kidnapped by the demons, but in fact, just a plan to destroy the demons from within the demon castle. From then on, the princess began to torture those kind-hearted monsters, not only using their hair to make pillows, but also tempting their bosses to carry out a human invasion against the demons. Assault Lily, an advertising anime launched by an action figure factory to promote their toys. The trailer contains almost all the popular elements of previous and modern anime, such as music, battle, and the last hope of mankind, lesbians. Perhaps the anime wants to be the next modern Macros Delta. Generally speaking, I don't have much interest in this kind of anime, because they put all the best parts on the surface in order to attract the viewers, and they ignore the making of the story. But the effect of this anime's trailer looks pretty good. Watching a couple girls holding weapons larger than themselves, all of them effing up the robots, combined with a passionate music, kinda makes me feel like I'm watching Kill a Kill and Ruby. If that lesbian element of Assault Lily is just a selling point, then Adachi and Shimamura put all the focus on depicting the emotion between the two girls. The story is about two young girls who suddenly developed an emotion beyond friendship one day. But if they were to confess to each other, they might not even be able to be friends anymore. The two girls kept hesitating like this and struggled between friendship and love. If one of them were to be replaced by male, it'll become the next Kimi ni Todoke. But this anime doesn't do this. The author describes the love between girls and girls in the same way as the love between boys and girls. I can promise that this lesbian anime, compared to most other lesbian anime and even those love animes you may have watched, contains more romance elements. The Journey of Elena tells the story of a witch named Elena who went to various places, met various people, and experienced various things, pretty much like the magical version of Kino's Journey. The quality of the trailer is not bad. Whether it's the special effects of the fire's light and the shadows, or the depiction of the city scenery, it's very beautiful. Not just the leisurely parts, this story also contains some dark and cruel plots as well. But for your fresh views and not to spoil anything, I'll just stop explaining it here. So whether you're into a leisurely anime or an anime series on the plot, I recommend you watch this anime. Warlords of Sigurd Riva. It seems to be a story about a girl flying a plane and fighting against something. There's not much content in the trailer, so I can't really analyze the plot of this anime very well. Thus, I want to read the manga. And as it turns out, the content of the manga is even less. The first chapter spent half of its content to describe how the heroines take a shower, talking in the bathhouse, explaining the background settings in the bathhouse, engaging in lesbian activity in the bathhouse, lesbian vision, utaware rumono. The script of this anime is under the charge of the author of ReZero. Plus these lovely girls in the trailer, I'm even more looking forward to whether this anime will become the next Madoka Magica. Ikebukuro Westgate Park Adapted from a novel that was serialized since 1997, it launched a TV series in 2000 and even adapted to a manga in 2006. You can even find this novel in a university library, and no matter which version it is, they are all very well received. And Doga Kobo is responsible for this anime's adaption, so it seems as if they want to challenge a new field. Dropout Idol Fruit Tart Finding any reason to become an idol Kuma 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 Bear Isekai plus Lesbian plus Game Nice 
Iwa Kakeru, Sport Climbing Girls. To make an ecchi anime not be age-restricted, it's best to add a sports tag to this anime's title. Our Last Crusade or The Rise of a New World, also known as Romeo and Juliet. And the last one, To Your Eternity. The story is about someone putting an orb in the world, and this orb can imitate anything and everything, as it starts to study all the living things it encounters. And after participating in human activities, it slowly begins to approach humans. This anime, whether it's the trailer or the manga, reveals a sense of epicness, and it has the potential to compete for the best anime of 2020. But unfortunately, it was postponed until the spring of 2021. Nonetheless, this makes it even more worth looking forward to. Well, there you have it. Those are all the anime that I've mentioned. But if we're talking about all of the Fall 2020 anime, then I only mentioned about half. There are just too many of them. If you're interested, feel free to check them out yourself. Now, I'm working on the Winter 2021 anime prediction and analysis. So, see you next time.